What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to a tutorial on how to paint Tao skin. Now, some people have been asking me for more tutorials, and um, I've just kind of been putting them off um, because I, I've been trying to figure out this new paint range, I'm trying to get the, the colors right for the you know the style of army that I want to paint. But I think I've finally gotten them down, and I'm trying my hand today at giving you a a skin painting tutorial. Now Tao skin is very light blue slash purple so um, we try to achieve a very lifelike effect with the skin and try not to make it look like he's just like he's not alive so um, what I mean by that is try to make him look like a living a living a living creature by using creams and dark purple washes and creamy highlights so I think we've achieved that effect right here it looks pretty interesting from from where I am just sitting here looking at this guy on my computer and uh, I think you guys will enjoy the video so stay tuned and thanks for watching don't forget to like uh, leave a comment down below and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one Mm-hmm, me tall warrior. Okay, here's our model. Let's get started. First, we're gonna make our um, wet palette. Got my clamshell, got a little piece of parchment paper here. We're just going to put it on. Instant awesome. All right, <clears throat> the first color we're going to use is the fang. Now this is, this technique is kind of a mixture of the one from the Painting Faces article in the old White Dwarf, so it's a, a while back. So it's actually using the older colors. So what I'm having to do is, you know, work in the new color range. And along the way, I've changed some steps. Um, just because I found that the colors weren't exactly comparable, I guess you could say. But if you have any Tao in your army with their skin showing, then this is how I would go about painting them. Shadow Gray in the old color range was perfect. It was a perfect base for this. And the Fang is pretty close. It comes pretty close to what Shadow Gray looked like, but it's to me it looks a little bit more bluish than shadow gray had a little bit more of that gray tone to it. So nice easy coat. Then while this is drying, we are going to Mix in, uh, mix a wash, a very special wash that Games Workshop doesn't make. And I don't know how this painter decided to use these colors, but they work for me. So the old color range it's light purple, scorched brown, and badab black. But I don't like the way the new known oil kind of works with the other paints. So I'm going to be using instead a very thin down Abaddon Black for, for the black. So in the new color range, the colors you're using are Abaddon Black, Dryad Bark, and Nagaroth Knight. So we're gonna mix the three of those up and I'll actually show it to you in our wet palette. They're supposed to be even, which is kind of why it's a bummer that Games Workshop doesn't do um, dropper bottles because 
be a lot easier to measure all this out instead of doing the eyeballing trick. You eyeballing me, boy? So, because they said Badab Black, I'm just really watering down the Abaddon Black. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of it in. Yeah, and we wanna add enough water that it becomes very, very watery and wash-like. a little bit more purple in there eh, this kind of looks like I don't know <laughs> doesn't look like any of the old original colors looks more brown than anything else more purple please just a little bit more all right so now I'm going to wash the surface of the skin. <laughs> the first time you put this on, you might think like I did when I first put it on, that this wash makes no sense. Why don't you just wash it with like a blue wash like Drakenhof Nightshade and just highlight up with blue and in the article interestingly enough the artist let me read it to you while this dries says um, well first he said that Tau Blood is actually purple and not blue for very scientific reasons which he doesn't go into so I guess that puts an end to it. Officially in the White Dwarf magazine, it says Tau Blood is purple. With this in mind, the artist mixed a, a wash, a mix of purple over the skin to make it look more lifelike, and this adds good definition and tone to the skin. And then he says, with Tau being blue and skin tone, all of the different nuances with shade and highlight help emphasize the appearance that it is a living creature, and if it was just shaded with a darker blue and highlighted with a light blue, the skin would look unnatural and therefore unrealistic. So, there you have it. The more purplish brown looking wash accentuates the um, lifelike creature, or that it is a lifelike creature. The artist that I'm emulating with my Tao color scheme, if you're wondering, Bruno Rizzo, amazing, amazing Tao. Google Bruno Rizzo Tao, B-R-U-N-O-R-I-Z-Z-O, and oh my goodness, his Tao are just mind-blowingly awesome. And they all have this chipped desert color scheme. But none of his Tao heads have their little, these little ponytail braids. Um, and I'm thinking of cutting mine off too, just to, to match, because yeah, they, they do kind of look silly. And where do they go when they put their helmet on? There's no room for it. the back here. After this dries we're gonna go back to using the fang. Yeah and if you want to use the old colors then the colors you'll need are scorched brown, chaos black, and shadow shadow gray. <clears throat> And then you're going to be adding Fortress Grey and uh, Commando Khaki. Yeah, but Bruno Rizzo's Tau, so amazing. They look so good. They actually make you want to go out and buy <laughs> and paint up Tau. And if you haven't seen my old Tau tutorial on how to paint a Tau Fire Warrior, then um, you can check that out too. I'm going to be making a new one though on how to paint a Tau Fire Warrior with a helmet on. So if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. That should be coming up in a little while. Just let this dry for a bit more. Yeah, but my, my Tau um, fluff, which I might as well get into while we're waiting, is that these are, it's a cadre of fire warriors and um, just, you know, a whole army of Tau that is being sent to a world to hold it off against the incursions of the Empire, uh, the Imperium of Man, rather, 
and along the way while they're traveling there because they don't use I found when I was reading the the background and the fluff of the Tao which this is very interesting if you didn't know Tao do not use the warp like humans and chaos space marines and um, just like the Eldar, Eldar don't use the warp they use the webway because it hides them from Slanesh the Tao don't use the warp because they don't have psychers so they wouldn't have like navigators and uh, people with psychic power to to kind of navigate the warp and fly them around the universe but what they do is they kind of use this like stone skipping effect like how you skip a stone on a pond or a lake to get it from one side to the other they draw themselves towards the warp and then at the last second they um, they shoot off of it using the currents without actually going into the warp to blast them through real space very technological but since the tower is such an Tech, uh, such a technologically advanced race, it's, um, it's, I guess, they figured out how to do it. And so, apparently, allegedly, it keeps them free from the taint of chaos and from, from the warp. But, anyways, in my army, in my Tau force, they, while they were slingshotting from the Tau Empire, one end of the universe to the other, they, um, they run into some trouble along the way and they're not able to reach their destination. Instead their giant troop ship or their you know their their flotilla or their fleet gets lost somewhere along the way and they are assumed dead. Like the all their ships gone down with all hands on it. But um, what actually happened is that they they came to rest on a planet, which is, you know, a desert planet. So these Tau were going to going to another planet um, in the galaxy expecting to fight in a totally different climate like an arctic zone or like a equatorial jungle rainforest maybe kind of zone so they were trained to do that more than anything else but then they end up on this desert land and the desert kind of is reminiscent of what their homeworld Tau homeworld used to look like before the the Tau advanced and evolved and kind of created a, a little living paradise out of it but before it used to be just mostly arid deserts and and plains and stuff like that so so they come to rest there and all of their communication is is you, you know their equipment is broken down and they're not able to get in contact with their home world and the uh, one other thing the ethereals that were leading them all died in the crash which means that now you've got this this army of Tau without the brainwashing effect of the ethereal cast to keep them in line and tell them what to do and how to you know how to how to go about their business so now the regular troops and the grunts like the, the regular fire warriors and and their their crude allies are having to try to figure out on their own how do we continue living the creed of the greater good while trying to survive here on this planet until hopefully either rescue can come or we can repair our ships enough that we can make a, a jump into a, a space that we know. So that's my Tau fluff. And um, for what it is, I think it's pretty cool. So I, I, it's nice and fluffy and they're not all like, you know, mindless robots. So that's what I mean by um, this army is probably all going to be mostly fire warriors and you know, their allies rather than having a lot of, or, or even any ethereal supervision. Okay, so that should be enough. So now we're going to go back to using the fang to highlight. And at this point, in order to keep the wash looking nice and dark and brooding, we are going to concentrate mostly on all the areas that the hot baking sun would be shining down on. So the top of their heads, the sides, and we're just kind of feathering, feathering the color. I mean, the whole reason that I came up with that fluff and not another 
color scheme or whatever is because I saw the, the Bruno Rizzo model models, their army, and, and I just oh, I just thought it was so cool. I think most Tao collectors out there have seen, or even if they don't know it's him, they probably you've seen his work. Um, just because it's so it's so iconic. If you've looked up Tao on, if you've Googled Tao or whatever, you probably might have seen it. Okay, so now your towel should look a little bit something like this. So now at this point we are going to start the actual highlighting. And we're going to start with a mix of the Fang and it says Fortress Grey and Commando Khaki. And the colors that I've found to substitute are Carrack Stone and, oh actually not Oakland Grey, that's too, too bright, Celestra Grey. So you should have your fang color already on your wet palette. So all I'm doing is adding the other two colors to it. And Carrick Stone, which is the new Commando Khaki, is, um, is a very nice neutral highlight color. It's not as stark as if you were to go, like if you weren't going to use it and you're just going to do Celestia Gray or Fortress Gray, um, it would, it would look too pale, I think. You need a little bit of that, that yellowish, kind of creamy color. So now I'm sticking to the brow line, the brow ridge, and the, the cheekbones, rather than highlighting up everything from before. Then I'm going to turn my model around now and highlight up from the upper lip. Just do a little bit of a light, light covering on the forehead. All right, so now your guys should look something like this. The next step, we're going to add even more Carrack Stone to our mix until you have almost a completely Carrack Stone mixture with a little bit of gray to it. Awesome! Just checked my my phone has has an eBay application and I I won some things that I was bidding on. Woo! Okay. So we're just repeating what we just did, but we're being even more careful to just do a fine line on the different areas. Also hitting his chin and there we go. So at this point you guys pretty much done, but 
um, the, the article says to now do a final highlight of Skull White. I think Skull White is a little too bright, so I'm going to use Othuan Gray, and I'm actually not going to use just Othuan Gray, I'm going to mix it into my Carrack Stone highlight. So now I have a kind of creamy, cream colored slash gray, really, really light gray mix. Yeah, a lot of people out there were asking for more tutorials, so hope you guys like this. And I'm, I've got a box of Fire Warriors, Fire Warriors I'm going to be unboxing, and I've got, um, like I said, my my guide on how to paint Fire Warrior armor. And I'm only going to do this scheme for now. Uh, somebody asked me for a Borcon color scheme, and um, I might do that later. I'm having to work through all the colors because there aren't really any guides with the new color range on how to do the alternate color schemes but yeah they are interesting those other various worlds that the Tao come from or that the Tao have settled I mean so I'm gonna try as best as I can to get to them all right and there you have it you have a Tao that looks like he's been he's been out there in the wilds, roughing it, and let's see if we can get a good focus on his face there. I, I actually don't paint the eyes in this article. If, if you've re read the article or seen the article, you were you would be amazed by how crazy uh, small the eyes are, and they're just like little red slits, and you can't even really see it. So I don't know how they painted it on there test model but I'm, I just usually like leave this model like this if you found that your highlights were a little bit too bright and stark you can just go back with your wash the wash that we made and just paint right paint it right back over or thin it down even more and use it as a glaze for your model to cover the um, cover the skin and tone down the colors but I kind of like this stark contrast to the to the skin so here's a little turn. Oh, it actually might be a little too stark now that I see it blown up on my computer screen. Hmm. Maybe we'll do just a... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to ruin what I did. Why not? Let's be adventurous. We'll just kind of stick to the shadows here. There we go, that's fine. That'll do, pig. Just spread it out. Yeah, if you put enough water in it, then it really just becomes a glaze and doesn't cover up your, you know, your paint job. There. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this, especially all you towel enthusiasts out there. Stay tuned for more tutorials, unboxings, reviews, and all that. And don't forget to check out Project One Gaming. I just watched a video on his Necron army. He's almost up to 100 subscribers and likes on, on Facebook and YouTube. So keep subscribing, keep liking his video, and um, he can he's going to throw in that 6th edition rule book and set of I think psychic cards, is that right? I don't remember, but it's just, it's, there's so much stuff he's throwing into his his uh, free Necron army deal for August if you're the lucky winner. And all you gotta do to get all that extra stuff is make sure that he gets enough subscriptions and likes. So check that out and uh, stay tuned for the end of the video when I'll be posting up my uh, the barcode that you can scan if you want a 20% off commission job off of his already crazy competitively cheap priced deals. And yeah. Go ahead and support him and stay tuned for more on my channel. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you later.